Greetings. I wouldn't really quite call this a, a follow-up, a direct follow-up to my video, Escape Velocity, but I wanted to talk about a few things. I kind of wanted to talk about MGTOW in general. Now, over time, uh, you know, we all evolve, and I evolve, and so have my thoughts. So I kind of, to begin with, want to talk about what I, how I perceive MGTOW, what I see MGTOW is, and, you know, MGTOW can be whatever you want it to be, uh, in theory, uh, and in practice. But for me, MGTOW has some very specific aspects to it that I, I personally find uh, important. I, I think make it, render it uh, unique. Above all, uh, I think MGTOW, for me, is exploratory in nature. That's why I make videos such as Escape Velocity. I want to explore new ideas. Some of those ideas might be wrong, and some of them might be right. And let me just say that that, for example, that perspective, the fact that I, 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 I am corrigible, if I'm incorrect about something, I will, I will allow myself to be corrected. Uh, I don't want to be wrong about things. And that's really the difference between me and many people, and particularly the difference between me and uh, people who hold preconceived ideological notions about things. Um, if you show me enough evidence, I will uh, reverse my perspectives and opinions on things. But the important thing is to be able to explore these ideas, whether they're 100% wrong, 100% right, 70, 30, whatever. It's important to be able to explore these ideas. And the thing, the thing about MGTOW, or what MGTOW means to me, is the ability to explore the, uh, these ideas in a constraint-free intellectual environment. You know, I was recently talking to a friend, uh, actually he's an apex mind, he literally is an apex mind, about uh, the human element in, in, say, science. You know, my father has a friend, he is a, this friend is a geophysicist, he had some ideas, uh, his university, and they might be uh, good ideas. I can't, I really can't judge it. I know very little about geophysics, but that's not the important element of the story. The important element of the story is um, that he had some ideas. He thought they were good. Nobody, a few people wanted to give them a chance, but the big shots in the department and the faculty didn't. So the human element interfered there. I mean, even in the sciences, you have these blockades to discourse and thought and what you, what you want to talk about. And it's not just, you know, feminism. It's people's egos. It's people's uh, pride and so on and so forth. Uh, even, you know, let's, we have to be honest. Even scientific ideas have pride and ego invested in them oftentimes. And uh, it's rare to find people retract uh, their opinions on things even in this hard sciences, I mean, it's hard to get that much harder than geophysics. And so what MGTOW offers as a concept is the ability to explore ideas in an unconstrained environment. And these ideas might be fluid, and they might be malleable, and they will inev inevitably evolve over time. That is, that is as inevitable as the rising of the sun. But the important thing is the exploratory nature of it all, the ability to, to explore ideas that are unconventional, unknown, little talked about, and so on and so forth. Now, one of the reasons I've chosen now to occasionally diversify my channel with other content is simple. Um, if MGTOW limits itself as a concept, a mo I don't like calling it a movement because MGTOW, by their very nature, are highly individualistic, most of us. But if MGTOW limits itself simply to saying, we don't get married, uh, the gun, the smoking gun, I mean, we know this stuff. It's been talked about extensively, and repeating it over and over and again has its uses sometimes. Sometimes it's a good mnemonic device. And sometimes this is good for re reinforcement. But, but moving forward, or the way forward I see it, is the continual exploration of unconventional ideas. 
even if they're inapplicable. Now, some of the ideas I propounded in uh, Escape Velocity are about as likely as, well, I might, and probably is more likely that I'll become a multimillionaire in my lifetime than they actually come to pass. But that doesn't really matter. Um, ideas can be explored on their own merits, and everything begins with an idea, ultimately. We don't know the result. Now, just as I mentioned with the dung beetles, you know, maybe down years down the line, a, a, a detailed uh, understanding and explanation of insect navigation will be beneficial to us. Maybe it won't be. Maybe some of the ideas I offered are completely off base. Some of them, maybe some of them are very accurate. Um, I think it's probably a mishmash, as is often the case with uh, new ideas. But, but the important thing is that you have new ideas that can be that can be discussed and that can be further developed. Uh, without that, we have a stagnation. Uh, generally speaking, I see the in, almost the entirety of the men's movement with you know, one or two exceptions, as, as a, a mechanism of repetition. And depending on what your goal is, <clears throat> that could be relevant. That could be a good thing. If you're an MRA and your only goal is to change the laws so you can go back to the plantation, then, um, you know, that's, that's a, I suppose, repeating things over and over again is, is just part of, uh, part of the ad campaign, uh, as it were. But I think MGTOW, as, as a distinct faction... Uh, ideally, should be different. Um, people should uh, be feel free to explore ideas uh, without constraints. This is why I rail so much against uh, preconceived a priori political assumptions and and ideologies. Uh, it's why I advocate post politicism. You're gonna you need to go into things to the extent that you can with an open mind and. Unfortunately, I believe it was Edmund Burke. He said, uh, "Prejudice is the is the uh, the clothing of the mind." I think we're all uh, we all have this we all have certain biases, but that to me is MGTOW, the exploration of ideas of unconvent of unconventional nature, venturing into new areas, uh, and and just letting uh, letting yourself run free with it. Uh, potentially, this is the I mean, this is the potential. And cooking these ideas up and moving along with them, maybe something will come of it, maybe not. But that's the difference between, I see, MGTOW and a much more constrained environment. This is one of my father's fr a friend, the geophysicist, had to deal with when he was active. You know, just and human human ego literally placing constraints on ideas, whatever uh, wherever they might be. And as I said, as you'd, you'd think that a, a field such as geophysics would be amenable to new ideas, but people put a lot of stock in in certain ideas if they become too attached to it. And scientists are human beings, and you know, that's that's what happens. Uh, for for a long time. I mean, I thought I was a kind of a, a universal libertarian in almost every regard. But when I, when I moved away from politics per se, I realized that certain arguments just did not, that our libertarians made, did not mesh well uh, with reality. And, and some of that was based on my own conclusions, and some of that was based on some interesting videos that Barbarossa had made on the subject and just reading up on things, and, and my continual understanding of evolutionary biology. And I just realized, no, I mean, a lot of things I still like, I can't accept everything. And that's what I mean about you know, changing your mind as the evidence uh, comes in. So regarding the video proper, there are a couple of things I, I, I need to clarify, maybe. Uh, there weren't well, one thing was the epigenetics thing. Uh, I mentioned that I don't think it's very remarkable. I actually explicitly, explicitly stated why. Let me state it again. Uh, I think, once again, much too much is made of epigenetics. Now, uh, what I mean by that is I've yet to see any evidence, and I'm perfectly willing to change my mind in this regard, to su suggest that, an, that epigenetic phenomena can change an idiot into a genius 
or a non-athlete into an athlete. And when the data come out for that, I will be I will be very interested in epigenetics. I will read every bit uh, out out there on the subject if if those changes do come about. But until then, all I see are uh, are data talking about fairly minor things. Uh, you know the the influence on, on disposition due to uh, stresses of, say, the grandmother or the mother and things like that, I find very unremarkable. Um, you're going to have an influence of, of disposition during your, the, during the stresses of your own life. Uh, and, yeah, the fact that, uh, who didn't know, exercise and nutrition has an effect on gene expression. Well, well, yeah. that, this, this is not uh, remarkable. But put it this way. If epigenetics can turn me into Hus Usain Bolt, uh, or more importantly, into maybe uh, Richard Feynman, I'll sign right up. Uh, but I don't see any evidence, based on what I've read, and maybe I'm missing something, suggests that epigenetics has that far-sweeping changes. It's just, uh, it's pretty basic at the end of the day. Now, once we can re-engineer the human genome, you know, uh, we can talk about a whole bunch of things. But until then, uh, to me, epigenetics seems to be a revival of, of uh, a soft form of Lamarckism, uh, Lamarckism, and it's just, it's not that I don't find the evidence convincing, I just find the evidence inconsequential and, and unremarkable. Uh, I, don't, I don't see a great deal. Yeah, like I said, if you can turn a non-athlete into a world-class athlete, uh, a slobbering idiot into a, a, nuclear, part, a nuclear physicist, That'll be interesting. Uh, I don't see any evidence for that. I don't see any evidence for turning non-talents into talents and so on and so forth. Um, no. And if there is, I'm, if you can provide some links and people are interested in, I mean, one comment, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, uh, it really, I couldn't believe what he wrote. He effectively wrote that every, you know, you can be anything with epigenetics because every, everything in your genes can be turned on and off. I mean, that's simply... Well, in theory, that's true, I guess. But if you don't have it in your genes, it can't be turned on or off. If you're not, if you're not meant to be the fastest man in the world, you're not going to be, no matter what you do. So, I approach the whole epigenetic topic with a healthy dose of skepticism and, and realism. I just don't. Gene expression is one thing. You're still stuck with the genes you have, and um, if uh, if you don't have certain genes or you don't have uh, if your gene if your genome isn't isn't set up such that you're going to be a certain way it doesn't matter what the environment does no so uh, thoughts on epi epigenetics no um, regarding how realistic all of the things I mentioned uh, are to imp implement um, hmm, it's highly unrealistic Admittedly, like I said, I think man is very carnal, uh, very cyberitic, and 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 very much uh, stuck uh, in this pattern. You know, it doesn't come up with the term nether ape for nothing, and or this this the automaticity, the autopilot. This is this is ingrained in us. But once again, going back to the concept of how I see MGTOW, Free to explore ideas and moving away from these fixed paradigms. I mean, every what is the manosphere in general about? It's about, originally, it was about, I mean, if you're an MRA, recognizing uh, you know, certain inequalities in the law and treatment and so on and so forth. And you get to really eventually, as you move down the rabbit hole, realize just how deep seated some of this stuff is. Uh, but no, but a few people offer ways, whether they're, they're actionable, truly actionable or not, or whether they're practical or not. Let's just stick with practical and practical. few people offer ways of, of moving past that. Everyone is, essentially, everyone advocates going back to the plantation in some shape or form, uh, with a few exceptions. Uh, you know, MRSA, we just change the laws and everything will be fine. We don't, we don't, we don't need, and we shouldn't change anything about human nature. You know, traditionalists say everything was great back in the day; everything was perfect. They don't say perfect, but everything was 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 far was optimized supposedly, with the 
nuclear family and blah, 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 and, and we just need to go back to that. And I'm saying, hold on a second, we're moving rapidly, ever more rapidly into the 21st century. Uh, I'm making use, even as I record this, of technology that didn't exist 20 years ago. I mean, we, we are in a technological singularity. Should we not adjust our habits and our conventions and our instincts and drives to the extent that we can to become adaptive within that kind of an environment, in between the within the mechanized environment? Because if we don't do that, if we don't do that, uh, I don't see a way forward. Uh, this is, you know, you can f disagree with me. I mean, every, I'm, I'm not, for, and I'm not claiming, I'm not claiming that everybody needs to be a genius and, uh, or everybody needs, the, the, the point I'm trying to make and about MGTOW is that I'm far from a genius, but I try to spend my time exploring new ideas, gaining new knowledge, reading, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a little like the argument about exercise. I'm highly non-athletic, and now I can't exercise at all because of the stupid hernia that happened to me. But um, you know, when I could exercise, and hopefully in a couple months from now, I, I enjoyed doing it, and it felt good. It wasn't going to turn me into an athlete, but I still reap some benefits from it. Uh, and the same thing could be said uh, for the mind. You know, even if a person only has a 100 or 90 IQ, he or she is still going to benefit from enriching his or her mind, uh, independent, independent of whether or not some grand discovery is going to may do that or uh, whether the person is a genius or not. There are benefits to this. And I, I do not think we focus enough on our cerebral nature in general as a species. And even I'm remiss in this sometimes. I, I, I waste a lot of time doing things that I don't personally view as productive sometimes. But... You know, this is, uh, I'm not an apex mind. Were, were I an apex mind, I suspect I would do far less of that. But um, So, simply suggesting things like changing laws and going back to the plantation, and, and this, it's taking insights and not moving forward with it. It's just, it's, it's just rehashing stuff, and I, I, I want to move as far away from that as possible. Now, on a semi-final note, the people who thought I might be suggesting negative eugenics, I certainly was not. What I was suggesting is that people, individuals, become aware of these issues of how they evolved, uh, what their reptilian mind, uh, their hindbrain is telling them essentially to do, and, and, and maybe rethink some of that stuff. Rethink and think just maybe, just maybe, given the state of affairs, the state of mechanization we're in at this current moment in time, maybe it's, uh, it's following the, uh, the patterns of yore isn't the best way forward. Just maybe. So, um, if I were to summarize what I've been saying, I'd simply say that, that MGTOW to me is about idea exploration and about looking at things afresh from a different perspective and allowing yourself to have a different perspective, if only for the duration of a video. Uh, you know, the, the world is just chock-a-block full of stagnant ideas, and most of the world and factions of the world are chained to either their ideological limitations or their human limitations and their pride and, and what have you. But um, I, I see MGTOW as a way forward, as a as a as a means as as a means of aggress. I think we can we can in fact uh, escape that, um, and by looking at these different aspects of humanity in, in different ways that are not permissible in polite company, or even in you know so called educated company. I mean, the atheist community is just rife with uh, with limitations on discussion. Yeah. So, anyway, I just thought I'd offer some perspectives on my views of MGTOW and a little bit of a follow-up to the previous video uh, in case some things had been uh, unclear. Anyway, until the next time, may uh, the gods watch over you and may you enjoy fortune and health. Health is important. 
You don't want to get stuck to a chair like I am for whatever duration. Everyone take care. Next time. Talk to you. Bye.